Hello, David here once again on behalf of Being Crypto. Today, I'd like to go beyond Bitcoin and talk about the realm that it paved the way for. I'm talking about decentralized finance. Also known as DeFi for short, this new area of financial technology is creating an entire ecosystem of platforms that are allowing individuals to take control of their money in a way that was only previously possible through banks and big business. Think about that. A world where you never need to trust a third party to help you manage your finances ever again. Everything from loans, currency exchange, even insurance, all have seen decentralized versions pop up thanks to this new technology. In this video, we'll be covering how does decentralized finance actually work? What assets are being used to power these platforms? What services are being offered? Where are we gonna go from here? And at the end of the video, we're gonna discuss some of the hottest names currently dominating the space, so you're gonna to wanna to stick around for that. By the time we're done, you should have a pretty good understanding of not only what decentralized finance is, but where and how you can begin getting involved. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Let's begin by discussing what makes decentralized finance even possible. First, we'll focus on the decentralized part. If you haven't already, you should check out our previous video on the basics of Bitcoin here. In it, I describe how a blockchain is basically a ledger that is trustless, transparent, and accessible to the whole world. There are many different types of blockchains out there, but in their pure form, they should be permissionless, updated in near real time, and without the need for any central authority. It's exactly this foundation that has allowed decentralized finance to become a reality for the first time in history. Okay, now the finance part. Well, this field is made up of basically the same services that are available in the legacy financial system. We'll get more into what those services are in just a moment, but be aware that most traditional offerings are available in the DeFi space and without a business necessary to run them. So how can this be done? Well, in addition to the power of blockchain, these services are run by something known as smart contracts. Smart contracts are literally contracts that are written in code and can be enforced without the need for a middleman or authority. Think of a traditional contract. It's an agreement between two or more parties that outlines a financial relationship. Maybe it's a one-time transaction, maybe it's an ongoing business contract, whatever. Historically, this meant that oversight was necessary to ensure that all parties were acting as agreed upon or else the contract would be violated. This meant hiring people, putting trust in them, and of course paying them for their services. However, if the rules are all written in code and enforced by the blockchain, there's no need for human intervention once the contract's been created. Once released, the code can never be altered. Access can be very difficult to block, and every transaction facilitated by the service has an immutable record on the network. So, how do users ultimately interact with these services? Well, through the use of decentralized applications, also known as dApps. As the name implies, these are simply applications that are powered by decentralized technology. From a user standpoint, they should work very much like the applications you're already familiar with, but it's what's going on under the hood that makes them interesting. By leveraging the power of blockchain and smart contracts, as previously outlined, dApps can offer almost any digital experience in a trustless and transparent manner. Take, for example, video games. Imagine that there was a game you could play that could not be meddled with either by hackers or even the development team that created it. Furthermore, it had in-game items that were effectively tangible. This is because they're coded onto the blockchain and cannot be taken from you unless you choose to trade them. They can even be tied to your account so that you can bring them across different games. Then there's communications. Obviously, censorship and security can be major issues for some social media apps, especially in certain parts of the world. But by using dApps instead, users can send messages that cannot be intercepted or deleted as they are propagated in an encrypted form through an entire network, not just a single server. Frankly, there's dApp versions available for just about any application people are already using today, and new ones are coming online all the time. But we're here today to more focus on financial apps, because just as this technology can be applied to communications and video games, so too can it of course be applied to managing money. Before moving forward, we should mention that while we've been learning that blockchain is making all of this possible, Bitcoin itself does not actually natively support smart contracts. This means that while Bitcoin is still an asset that plays a huge role in DeFi, we must look to other networks that came after Bitcoin as a means to build this new ecosystem. In my previous video, I mentioned that beyond Bitcoin, there were many other cryptocurrencies that built on top of what had already been created. One of the first new networks to pop up in Bitcoin's wake was Ethereum. Originally proposed in 2013 by Vitalik Buterin and later released in 2015 thanks to the work of Buterin and many other developers. Ethereum took the basic idea of the Bitcoin blockchain and modified it to support smart contracts. The creators envisioned it as acting as a sort of decentralized global computer. 
any Ethereum node could store and run code that interacted with the blockchain. This then allows for the creation of programmable assets on the Ethereum network. Referred to as tokens, these assets use smart contracts to define their own unique properties as to how they operate. They can all also have their own individual values despite existing on the same blockchain. The combination of dApps and tokens has led to a vast DeFi ecosystem, as over the last five years, thousands of unique projects have been deployed onto the Ethereum network alone. And make no mistake, Ethereum was just the beginning. Not all these networks work in the exact same way, but projects like EOS, Tron, Cardano, and many more are all after the same goal, a global computer with programmable money powered by blockchain. We don't have the time here to get into the nuts and bolts of each of these different projects, but stay tuned to this channel as we'll be doing deep dives on all of them and much more real soon. On that note, if you want to start exploring some of these assets on your own and you want a great exchange to do so, then check out Stormgain. Stormgain is a Newcastle United shirt sponsor and the hottest upcoming exchange that allows you to trade up to 200x leverage on all the major cryptocurrency pairings. Learn how to trade with a free $50,000 demo account, join trading competitions, and use the tools and indicators that will allow you to begin analyzing the market like a pro. Just click the link down in the description to get started today. Okay, back to the topic at hand. We could spend hours talking about every variant of every financial service that's available in DeFi, but for now let's focus on a few of the biggest and most popular ones. First off, let's talk about decentralized exchanges. These are cryptocurrency exchanges that are run by smart contracts instead of by companies. Users trade in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, and the code running in the background ensures that everything goes smoothly without any human oversight. Then there's lending and borrowing. Just like with fiat currencies, lenders are seeking to loan out their assets so they can earn a passive income when those loans are repaid with interest. Borrowers, on the other hand, are usually looking for quick access to assets they either don't have or don't have enough of, and are willing to pay the interest fees in exchange for the convenience. Normally, these types of loans would be handled by banks or financial institutions, but it's now possible for individuals to be their own bank. There are, of course, many other services available, such as insurance, predictions markets, and the ability to tokenize traditional assets like stocks or commodities. At this point, however, there's one other aspect of decentralized finance we should be talking about, and that's something called stablecoins. Stablecoins are tokens whose value can be pegged to almost anything. For example, one of the more well-known stablecoins out there is something called Tether. Tether is pegged to the US dollar, meaning that one Tether is always equal to one USD. This is done so that users can keep their assets in units that they're familiar with, but still have all of the benefits of accessing a decentralized digital platform. As good as all of this sounds, there's still a lot of work to be done. Most of these projects are in their infancy and could contain unforeseen flaws in their code. Furthermore, it's not uncommon for their interfaces to be a little unintuitive for those who are less tech-savvy, as they often require a bit of general knowledge about their underlying mechanics. This is changing fast, as developers are working hard to make for user experiences that are as simple as a few clicks and as reliable as traditional software. Another issue can arise from a lack of clear or consistent regulation. Since this is such a new field of finance, lawmakers have yet to really catch up, and hence, rules can vary wildly in different jurisdictions or simply be completely non-existent. This should be changing pretty soon too, but some are concerned about how their current financial dealings could be affected by future regulatory shifts. Things like how payments are taxed and what investment vehicles are legal could shift somewhat quickly, and users could find themselves with a real headache if they haven't kept up. One other barrier that's currently affecting this ecosystem is liquidity. For our purposes here, liquidity refers to the ability to have access to an asset on demand. The problem in DeFi is that although many new currencies and tokens are being created, it can be a little tricky to get them to all work with one another. You see, different blockchains don't really directly interact with each other, so having decentralized trading of these assets can be complicated, and at times, access to one asset or another can be difficult enough as to restrict the free flow of trade. All of these problems are being worked on, and to that end, let's take a look at some of the most interesting projects currently being developed in DeFi. Know that there's countless others, but let's take a peek at a few of the biggest. First up, let's talk about Uniswap. Uniswap seeks to act not only as a decentralized exchange, but also as a liquidity pool for the DeFi market. The protocol is created on the Ethereum platform and hence supports any type of token on the network. Individuals can create liquidity in existing markets or create new markets by simply offering up their assets to be included in the pool. The incentive to do so, as previously mentioned, is that asset providers earn a passive income through interest, which can then be reclaimed at any time. MakerDAO, an odd name I know, but that really isn't uncommon in the DeFi space. What you need to know about MakerDAO is that it's a platform that lets users effectively loan money to themselves by putting up a sufficient amount of cryptocurrency as collateral. So let's say you needed some liquid digital cash fast. You could get a loan based upon how much Ethereum, for example, you offer up. You can then utilize the money, pay back the loan, and your Ethereum will be returned to you. 
This is certainly very similar to how traditional loans work, but here again it's now all being handled by hard-coded math. Finally, let's talk about AVE. At first glance, the AVE protocol looks like just another decentralized lending market, but there are some unique features, such as something called flash loans. Flash loans are loans that don't require any capital to be put up front, because the money is both borrowed and returned in a single transaction. This development on its own could be a revolution for finance, and it's only possible thanks to DeFi. Okay, that's probably plenty for now, but check out the description below for links to all of the projects discussed here today and more. If you're enjoying this content, please give us a like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments section below what kind of material you'd like to see in future videos. Of course, check out some of our other educational content and interviews here on YouTube. Also, if you can't wait to learn more about trading, maybe come and check out our Being Crypto trading community over on Telegram. Come back next time when we'll be going even further into the realm of digital assets and decentralized finance. But until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.